Right now, all over the world, people are taking the opportunity to exercise their citizenship. What's unique is that they're doing it right from their own homes. People are being encouraged to do their civic duty by social distancing. But what makes something like social distancing a civic duty? For me, I consider it to be one because I feel a personal obligation to keep both my family and my community safe and healthy. But it's not just in times of a global pandemic that neighbors can look out for one another. For instance, millions of Americans go without their basic necessities every day, pandemic or not. But you and I have the power to change that. So, what are basic needs? According to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, a person can only begin to prioritize the more abstract things in life, like safety, belonging, self-esteem, and confidence, when all of their physiological needs have already been met. These are things that every person needs simply to survive, like food, clean water, sleep, and shelter. Without these necessities, a person's physical and mental health are at risk. But what if only a certain percentage of the population was required to pay more in order to have their needs met? What if once a month, a fourth of the world's population couldn't go to school or work? Well, for many women, girls, and families, that's exactly what's happening, because they lack essential items like diapers and menstrual products. This concept of including diapers and menstrual products as basic necessities is a relatively new one, but it's proving to be more important than we ever imagined. This issue poses three main problems. Problem number one, the lack of basic needs like diapers and period supplies prohibits many of our neighbors from fully participating in society. For instance, did you know that in the last year in the U.S. alone, one in four women struggled to purchase period supplies? In some parts of the world, these items are not as readily available, and menstruators have to repurpose things like cloth, wool, and even paper to feel clean and maintain personal hygiene. In other countries, like the United States, a special sales tax has even been placed on items like pads and tampons. Diapers are not included in many federal assistance programs, although many families rely on disposable diapers for their child care services, which then allows them to go to work. When women and girls are on their period and cannot afford pads or tampons or other products, they may choose to stay at home rather than go to work or school. Dr. Kuhlman at St. Louis University did a place-based survey that showed that women living in poverty are disproportionately affected by lack of access to menstrual products than women who are able to afford them or have access to free supplies. This has the potential to further the cycle of poverty for many. Lack of access to diapers and period products poses a great risk to our public health, which is problem number two. When families with children and menstruators don't have access to enough hygienic products, their physical and mental health is at risk. Much of the research done on the subject of diaper need shows strong correlations between diaper need, poverty, mental health in mothers, and the healthy development in her children. Women are forced to choose between buying food and menstrual products. Without either, some part of their well-being is neglected, making it nearly impossible for them to become active citizens, even when they desperately want to be. In New Haven, Connecticut, a group called Moms provides mental health services to mothers and also provides them with free diapers. This group was established in 2017 after psychology researchers at the Yale Child Study Center were able to show strong correlations between the lack of food and diapers on mothers' mental health and the subsequent effects on their children. Because such a large chunk of the population is affected by diaper need and or period poverty, we should consider the potential health risks as a threat to our public health. Problem number three. There are policies currently in place that prevent equitable distribution of diapers and period supplies. There are many nonprofits that distribute diapers and period products, either as their sole mission or in conjunction with other services, like food aid, parenting classes, and educational attainment. Churches and schools have also joined in the fight against diaper need and period poverty. These are good solutions in the short term. However, as one study showed, policy reforms on federal programs like TANF and WIC on organizational, state, and federal levels are proving to be beneficial in the long term. It is clear that the only way to completely eradicate these issues is through policy change.
With governing bodies making diapers and period supplies more accessible for all, more people will be able to positively contribute to their communities. Remember how I said you have the power to change this? As we've recently seen, humans have the ability to enact positive change throughout the entire world. So why not do the same when it comes to helping our community members meet their basic needs? If we want to see widespread human flourishing, we must find ways of making basic needs more equitable. Make it your civic duty to simply donate to local organizations that provide such needs. A great place to start is by looking at the websites for the National Diaper Bank Network and the Alliance for Period Supplies to find one in your area. And if you're feeling brave enough, call or write a letter to your state and federal representatives encouraging them to pass legislation that removes the sales tax on products like pads, tampons, and diapers. This is a crucial step in making basic necessities more affordable and accessible for men, women, children, everywhere. Thank you.